Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how you can create this smartphone here where you can call someone. Hey Steven, let's go bowling. Alright, let's go. So the first thing we need is we go to the settings, project settings, go to input and create a new action map for the phone. Let's just call this phone and put this on P, whatever you want. Then we go to our character here that we use and we just call the phone function. The first thing we need is a flip-flop. From this we want to set the state machine. I put the link in the description for the state machine tutorial. Pretty easy but um, yeah. We don't want to show this for the second time so let's Pretty easy on the A state, we want to put this on the phone state so that we have the animation for phone and otherwise we have the normal animation. Pretty easy. Then we want to go to from the character movement, want to set movement mode, in this case to none. And when we are back to normal, we go back to normal, like this one. Then we say get player controller. From here we say create widget and connect the point here. From this on we go to remove all widgets back to normal. Now we have to select a widget of course. So I prepared a few things for this. So we have here the phone widget, the call widget. So it's pretty easy. You go right click, use interface widget. Then I have a static mesh as a phone. We have a phone hut. You can use this when you want. So it's pretty easy as well. You go to the blueprint class, type in hut and there it is. So in this hut is, yeah, just nothing. This is just a hut. And we have this structure here. Um, so we go blueprint structure. And this structure is pretty simple. You can set up some variables that you want. So we have a name as a string. We have a number as an integer. And we have an audio as a sound wave. So we use this later because I have audio files here for some persons that we can call. And when I click one... Hey Steven, let's go bowling. Yeah, let's just play the sound. So, and we have some images, so the material for the phone and some icons for the phone, the numbers, yeah. So let's open up this phone widget here. So the phone widget, as you can see, is just the canvas here that we have. We have this phone here, it's just an image. And on this image we have three buttons. So as you can see, that's just a button and I have put the image inside the style here. So we have these three icons here. So the best thing about it is we can click these icons. So first of all, let's go back to our character and put on our phone widget like that. Then we have to add to viewport, of course, show mouse cursor. We uh, go to the get player controller connected. Of course, we set it to true. On the other state, we want to set it to false. So on the B case, attach component to component and select the mesh like that and this is the parent so disconnect the target we set it to snap to target snap to target and keep world and uncheck the world simulate bodies so then we want to add up this phone here so as i said we have a static mesh here this phone here so let's go to add component and say static mesh and you already select the phone. So let's go here and say the 
Visibility is false. And then we just get the phone here and this will be the target. Down here we want to of course detach it. So we go from the phone again and say detach from component and just select it. We say keep world, keep world and keep world and uncheck this here. So, and the last part is, of course, we need the socket name. So we go to our character again. So select our mesh here, open this up, go to the skeleton. And what I want to do is we can say preview animation. And in this case, the animation is called texting. I put the link in the description for the animation. And as you can see, I already prepared that. So we go for the uh, right hand. So as you can see, I go the hand underscore R, then you say add socket. And I call this right hand socket. And then you can say add preview asset and I adjust at the phone and then you can place it on the right. Yeah position here. Great. So let's copy this socket name here, go back to our character and put it right onto the socket name like that. And then we just go from the from again and say set visibility, connect it. And of course we want to set it visible. And down here we want to set it not visible. Great. So compile and save this. So let's see if it works. When we hit play and press P, he plays the animation, the phone is in the hand and we have this widget where we can click on some buttons here. As you can see, we see the mouse and we hit P again. Yeah, the phone disappear, the heart disappear and the mouse disappear. Great. So next step is we want to use the phone. So we go to our phone widget here. And the first thing is we go to our graph. And we have these three icons here. So we go the click events like that. And for this part, we want to just use the first button, so this call button here. The first thing is we want to say remove from parent because we want to remove this um, hot, this or this widget from the view and want to add up another widget. So we go here and say create widget. And now we want to select the call widget that I showed. So this is this one here. When I open this up, you can see we have this phone again. We have a background, this is just white. And then we all have all these buttons here. So I just cut it out from a, just a picture. So all these clickable buttons. And again, it's just an image, nothing special. We have a text field where I can show up the number. We have a back button. So I just put on a button and put none into the draw as so that's invisible but you can click it yes that is the whole widget here so let's go back to our phone widget so we want to open up this call widget here so if you want you can say get player controller and put this return value to owning player and then we just say add to viewport again. So we have finished our phone widget. So let's go to the call widget. And let's first of all, let's um, set up our back button here. So on click, the first thing is we want to as well remove from parent. And again, we want to say create widget. 
again get player controller and here we go again with the phone widget like that and again add to viewport so let's see if this works when we hit play we press p then we click on the phone the phones open up and when we click on the back button we are back to the main menu and we can switch around great so now we want that we can type in the numbers so the first thing is we want a new function for this let's say set text and this gets an input one this will be the text the text will be a string just for example and then we need two variables so we go back to our event graph here the first thing is the number this is a string as well and the add text as well as a string so the number is that number that we call later so we open up this set text function here and we want to set the add text to the text that we gave into the function then we take out our number say get and then we want to say append so that we add up the add text to the number and then we want to set the number to the text that we added like this the last part is we want to take out our call field say get and then we want to say set text like that and then we just connect it here and he will convert the string to the text value here so compile and save this so this is the set text function we can close this here now we have to call the function of course and we take our buttons here and do this for every button so we can just do this here call the function and of course when we press zero we want to add zero so let's do this for the other buttons so i skipped the process so of course on every button we call the number that it has to be so now we need the call function itself so we have our call button here and again on click let's put it right here and the first thing is we want to cost to my instance so i will explain this so i have create this instance here so you go here and say blueprint class game instance so this one here and the game instance is a global place where you can store variables that you want to use in the whole game so i created this variable here so you go plus variable and the variable type is the context structure so as i said before we have this this item structure here as i said the name the number it's in audio and we just type in this part here so contacts is the structure here and i put the variable to array and then you can just set up the default values so you can hit plus add up someone so the first someone i add up is just the name brian and the number 555 and we have three audio files for brian then we have something for Samuel as well, the audio files and the number 666 and Jessica, just for example. And as well, you can add up whatever you want here. So yeah, that's the whole part about it. Great. So then we call the, uh, we cast to the instance that we created so in my case is my instance you can call it whatever you want then we say get game instance and connect it to the 
object here. Then we go and say for each loop with break. Go from the instance, say get contacts. This is the array that I showed. Connect the array with the loop here. Then we go from the array element, split struct to pin. So now we have the array element name, number and audio file for every person that we can call. First of all, we go from the number here and say equal integer because we want to of course know did we call the number. So we take a branch, take out our number here, say get and connect it. And he will convert the string into a number. Then we go from our array elements or the audio files, say get a copy. Let's say we want to do a random integer. So just for example, connected here in my case, the maximum is two for the audio files. So every time you call someone, it plays just in random audio files. You can set it up whatever you want. Then of course on true, we want to play a sound to D just to make it simple and connect the return to the sound. Then after that, we want to set the number to nothing and call our set text function again and leave it to nothing. From this, we go back to the break situation for the loop. So we cast the game instance, get our context that we created. So this one here, then we have a for each loop to check if the number that we type in is equal to a number that is our, in our contact list. Then we, if it is equal, we play the sound for a random audio file and set back the number. So let's see if that works. So we hit play, press P. Then we can call someone, let's say 555 for Brian and hit call. Hey Steven, how are you? Or 777 for Jessica. Hey, it's Jessica, what's up? Yeah, works pretty good. And we can every time type in a new number when we go back, we can repeat that and when we press P again, we are back to normal. Great, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know and yeah, goodbye.